No, I'm the same person, but it's a different suit. <laughs> Hello! You may have noticed I'm doing something a bit different. That's because I'm doing a video that is a little bit different than the ones I've done in the past. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I am a big, big, big Marilyn Monroe fan. Big fan of hers. I love her movies, I love her style, and as I got to know about more about her later on in life, I began to understand that there was more behind her than just the glamorous image that she would portray in her films and in her pictures and that was something that I really felt an affinity with and that's what drew me in as a fan rather than just the glamorous persona of Marilyn Monroe you know I was more interested in the person as well so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at Marilyn Monroe's movie catalogue and you know I'll start from her earlier days as you know sort of like a Hollywood starlet on into you know the blonde bombshell she became and you know just look at each in movie individually and you know just see what I think of them and we're starting off with pretty much her very first starring role in Ladies of the Chorus so basically the story of Ladies of the Chorus is Marilyn Monroe is playing a character called Peggy who works in a burlesque troupe with her mum don't get excited it's 1940s burlesque so we see a lot of legs but not much else I mean five minutes in we do get a cat fight But only the one. Showgirls, this is not. But it does allow the movie to introduce the best character, Joe, who has the funniest lines in the film. A fine thing, fighting like a couple of alley cats. What are you trying to do? Give burlesque a bad name? Well, if you think I'm, I'm not supposed to think. I'm the stage manager. My job is to get this show on. So this movie is only an hour long, so a lot happens in a very short amount of time. Basically, uh, the main star of the Blessed Troop, she quits, she leaves, she's out, she's gone. Um, and then Peggy's mum, May, manages to trick Joe into letting Peggy go on stage and perform in her place. And she's a big hit and, you know, she becomes the new queen of burlesque. She has two main numbers on stage. One is the song, you know, anyone can see I love you you know where she's wearing that beautiful sort of pale gown and it's all very dreamy and sweet the second one is um about sugar daddies which is fine I mean you know it was the 1940s and you know they're burlesque dancers and you know there's nothing wrong talking about more risque subjects the problem is later on in the number they decide to take the idea of sugar daddy sugar baby very literally. Every baby needs a dad, dad. Like, too literally. <laughs> it's a bit weird. So there's a guy who's brought to the burlesque show called Randy. Yes, Randy gets taken to a burlesque show. He instantly falls in love with Marilyn and he starts sending her all these orchids on anonymously. Um, but she manages to track him down to the florist and she has a little bit of uh, to and throw with the sales girl there. And I really like this scene because from that you can really see Marilyn Monroe as the comedian starting to shine through just a little bit. Uh, she doesn't get that many funny lines in this movie so we don't really get to see that as much but you see a little hint of what she will be able to do in her future movies. You know things like um, uh, Some Like It Hot or Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. You see just a little hint of that in that little exchange she has in that scene. But this guy Randy, he he is adorable. <laughs> he is, he's the original adorable guy. He's like this rich kind of well-to-do guy and you'd think oh you know why does he want to be with a burlesque girl and you no know, but he's like no I don't care if she's a burlesque girl she's beautiful and wonderful and I love her and I'm going to marry her with her mum's permission so we then have a scene between Randy and Peggy's mother so can I just quickly say that there is this weird uh, running joke at the beginning of how old uh, Peggy's mum is and 
I mean, I get the idea, like, she's wearing a, a fake blonde wig, and when she takes it off, she's got grey hair, but, yeah, basically, she, uh, what is she, like, five years older than Marilyn? I don't know, like, ten at most? But no, she's, she's very old, and, you know, she's past her prime, so, yeah. So, Randy and the mum meet, but she's not too convinced, because it's a little bit too similar to what happened to her. So via flashback, we get her backstory. She also met an affluent young man. Uh, they got married, but unfortunately, his friends weren't that nice about it. His mother wasn't too keen on it, and it just didn't work out, and they got divorced. A couple of side notes about this flashback. One, the mum has lovely legs to dance with. I mean, good, good tap dancing. Good tap dancing legs. And if this was before, her daughter was meant to have been born around about 18 years or so so why is it still the 1940s like <laughs> they don't even try to make it like two decades earlier like it is just the 1940s just two decades ago also the 1940s and this is where we are also introduced to another amazing character Billy and the night that May announces her engagement was the night that he was going to ask May to marry him. And she tells him before he can ask her and he's like, oh, you know, oh, I just forgot what I was going to come in and ask you about. Oh, well, never mind. Congratulations. And then he leaves and it's so sad. And I'm just like, Billy, you get back in there and you tell her, you tell her how you feel. You tell her right now. So the mum thinks same thing's going to happen again with Randy. Randy is just like amazing. He's like, no, I am gonna stick by her. You know, people are more broad minded in the 40s. You know, <laughs> things have changed. And well, quite frankly, I'm gonna marry her one way or the other. You know, as long as she says yes. <laughs> and, you know, you can't stop us. So, you know, what, what are we gonna do, lady? And so she goes, all right, fair enough. But you have to tell your mum before you get married and Randy bottles it. And so we are now introduced to another character, Mrs. Carol, Randy's mum, who is the best thing about this movie. She's the best thing in this movie. She is amazing and you will love her. Because when you meet her, you think, oh no, she's gonna be a problem. She's gonna be prudish. She's not gonna, she's not gonna be okay with him marrying a burlesque dancer. This is where the conflict is gonna come from. So they have the engagement party and there's food and there's guests and there's a band. And if you've seen this movie, you probably know what I'm about to talk about. They're introduced and they play a horrendously racist song. When you bang right there alone. When they speak of love and passion, they'll is beat in rhythmic fashion. All you hear is clankety clop clop chop chop boogie bop boogie bop mama. Even if they whisper honey, what comes out is loud and funny. All you hear is clankety clop clop chop chop boogie bop boogie bop mama. Hmm. I wonder why in all of the documentaries about Marilyn Monroe and her early career in Hollywood, why none of the movie historians talk about that bit. And on top of that, one of the musicians outs Peggy as a blessed queen in front of everybody not professional not professional at all but we needn't worry because mrs carroll takes charge so you want to run away because a few narrow-minded people object to the way you've been earning your own living you'd be willing to give up the man you love everything without a fight see i told you she is the best thing the conflict wasn't really there because she says what we're all thinking you two love each other, that's all that matters, they can think whatever they like. If her son wants to marry a burlesque queen, then her son is marrying a burlesque queen. And so Mrs. Carroll sings it out with what is my favorite number out of the movie. At 25, Marie Lamar became a famous burlesque star. At 50, she could wave a hip that would make a whole crew abandon a ship. You're never too old to do what you did. You're never too old to feel like a kid. You may need a cane and wear a toupee, but you're never too old till you're put away. Away, away, where everything And yeah, 
basically uh, Mrs. Carroll just saves the day. She is the greatest thing. And that was Ladies of the Chorus. I would definitely recommend it. It's only an hour long, so it won't take up too much of your time. And if you are a Marilyn Monroe fan, it's definitely one to check out. And that was the beginning of our Marilyn Monroe-thon. I hope you did enjoy it, and I will see you soon.